All right, Ultimate Edition 3.0. Let's first take a look at the Ultimate Edition website. It says here what is Ultimate Edition. Now I will not read everything here, but basically what is highlighted here on the website are features such as speed, safety, appearance, compatibility, and user friendliness. So let's see if all of this is true. Now this of course is not the default desktop for Ultimate Edition 3.0. Um, I added this nice purple wallpaper here, my Total OS Today logo, just to give it a different color scheme. Change the theme colors here to my liking. Speaking of themes and colors, you right click on the desktop and you have Buku bunch of different themes, uh, wallpaper. These are all the backgrounds here. Like I said, this thing is loaded. Uh, themes here and so on and so forth. But basically the, the default setting for Ultimate Edition, you have a panel bar at the top and a panel bar at the bottom. System Monitor. Now this thing thus use the compass effect. So I do recommend you have a dual core processor if you want this to run smoothly. It's using over a gig of memory doing the screencast. All right, the power menu here, of course, time and date. Sound menu, sub menu, recorder. Now what's nice about this, you can right click on the panel bar and add applets. You cannot do this with Ubuntu Unity or GNOME 3. I did add the uh, Cardapio menu. As an option, it is not necessary to install this to run Ultimate Edition, but I figured what the heck, it looks nice, so I left it there. Okay, the uh, shortcut for Firefox, of course. The Terminator, it says here, run multiple terminals in one window. Nice. And this is the uh, Ultimate Edition Media Player. There we go, oops, there we go. Very nice, and of course the Compass Effects gives you wobbly windows and stuff like that. I don't have anything here yet, I just installed this last night as far as music goes. All right, let's get out of that. And of course you've seen this before, applications, places, system, the menu file system at the bottom, of course the other panel bar, trash, and show the desktop button shortcut here. Alright, let's go into the software. Now this has a lot. I will not go into every single piece of software. I tried doing it la last night in a test review and I ran almost 25 minutes, so let's condense this. Alright, accessories, games, graphics, internet, office, programming, sound and video, system tools, wine, Ubuntu Software Center. Like I said, you've probably seen this before running pre-Unity versions of Ubuntu. Let me just highlight a few pieces of software under Accessories. Um, GDesklets and Screenlets are both nice. They're both uh, similar to something like Yahoo Widgets to add widgets to your desktop. Now I'm not necessarily sure if one is better than the other. Um, try it. What's nice about this, you have both so you can delete one or the other if you so choose to. Games, of course, your normal array of games. I do like playing uh, occasionally with my son four in a row. Okay, graphics. Picasa, very nice photo manager. Uh, you can install this both in Linux and Microsoft Windows. You have F-Spot photo manager and a whole bunch more. Again, uh, for myself, I will probably be deleting some of this because like I said, this system is loaded. Internet, you have AMSN, Checkmail, Chromium, Web Browser, Clause Mail, don't know that. Uh, moving down the list, I'm not sure what the difference is between Google Chrome and Chromium Web Browser. Landshark, that is a, okay, a file sharing tool. Opera, Web Browser, nice. Pigeon Internet, glad to see that Skype is installed. This is what I use when I do the podcasts with Infinitely Galactic. Transmission, Bit and client, team viewers nice, Thunderbird news, uh, Toucan manager, download and up 
load manager for hosting sites, Wi-Fi, radar. Uh, I don't have Wi-Fi on my desktop, so I may delete this. Wireshark, sounds like a movie. Network traffic analyzer, IRC chat, and the RSS reader. Okay. Office, of course, uh, LibreOffice installed by default. Programming. I'm not familiar with some of these pieces of software, so I may be deleting this. Sound and video, again, this is loaded here. Two man DVD, acid rip DVD ripper. Oh, there was just a lot here. Let's see. What I occasionally use is Audacity. Banshee is cool. Brazero, I use. Uh, Clementine is nice. Oh, um, let's see, let's see. Exhaley is nice. Gnome Baker. Hmm, I'm starting to get hungry. All right, bad joke. Write, copy, CD, DVD, Gnome Player. If you have an iPod, the iPod, iPod Manager is nice. I do use Handbrake to transcode some of the screencasts. Hydrogen Drum Machine. It's a cool little piece of software, but I'll probably delete that. Imagination, a lightweight DVD slideshow. Haven't used that. Nice. ISO Master. Kazam Screencaster. Um, this is in a state of change for Kazam. Downloaded, it doesn't work in uh, Ultimate Edition 11.04. I believe there is a final version coming out with Ubuntu 12.04. Alright, Kden Live to edit the videos. Kino, edit DV video. I'll probably delete that. Won't need that. Lives video editor tool. Tried that once, didn't really work very well. And as you can see here, so on and so forth, one piece of software of note, Songbird. Didn't they stop development on this for Linux a couple years ago? I think so. All right, system tools. Back in time, Bleachbit is nice. Cairo Doc, DV Disaster, so on and so forth. Let's see, what is HTOP? Okay, system monitor for the terminal. All right, moving along. Uh, Wine, if you want to install some of your Windows programs inside Linux, this will may help you out. The Ubuntu Software Center, I don't believe, was installed by default. I had to download it myself, I think. Places and system. Let's go to system. Of course, the usual preferences here. Uh, what stands out here is the Compass Config Settings Manager to add and change the effects on the desktop again. For this, I do recommend a dual core processor. You can see the wobbly windows here. Administration, let's see, additional drivers. I had to download video drivers for this desktop. That was important and the usual other stuff here. Let's see, does anything stick out here? Uh, not off the top of my head. Now, that being said, I had an issue after installing this. If I go to system, go to administration and you go to the update manager. No problem except for one thing. When after installing this uh, there was no update manager. It was not here. Uh, I had to physically download and install this. Now if you are new to Linux and trying to work your way around this can be a big big problem. Uh, it was somewhat of a big problem for me because I couldn't download any updates and I don't believe I've ever seen that before. Another issue I ran into Let's go into the Synaptic Package Manager. Type in my passcode. Okay, when I went to Settings and Repositories to add software, this didn't work either. So that was another pain in my uh, panel bar, if you know what I mean. And finally, the other thing that didn't work when I went to the uh, terminal to add repositories to add software, I got one big error message that I didn't quite understand or didn't really see before. So I ran into a bug or two and they were big ones. No update manager, couldn't install certain pieces of software. Now after tinkering with this for a little bit I was able to figure it out because I had the patience to. But if you are new to Linux and wanted to try this out as a replacement to Windows or as a dual boot you were you were going to be in a world of hurt so how can I score this in the end alright I will try to be as fair as possible stability I will say this this thing is stable no problems no crashes whatsoever 
I give it 20 points. Bugs. There was only really one or two, but man, they were big ones. I will have to give that a zero. Software. All the software you software you would ever need, no problem, except except for the most important piece of software that didn't work. I won't give it a zero, but I give it a ten. Let's see, navigation. Yeah, you shouldn't have any problems navigating through this. This is pretty straightforward. I will give that a twenty. User friendliness. Well, if it wasn't for the bugs, this would have been completely user friendly. I'll give that I don't know, maybe a 10. You know, again, not having the update manager, not being able to to uh, change the uh, settings in the synaptic package manner manager, terminal command error. I'm not sure what happened, and I actually uninstalled this and reinstalled it again just to see if it would make a difference, and it made no difference whatsoever. So there was only a few bugs, but they were big ones. So if you are new to Linux. Uh, for now, stay away from this. Go with uh, Linux Mint 11, not Linux Mint 12, not yet. They're still going through some growing pains. If you know what you're doing, go ahead. I can recommend Ubuntu Unity. I haven't had any issues. And of course, as always, I can recommend Zorin if you are new to Linux. Well, all right, guys and girls, that's it. That's it for this review of Ultimate Edition 3.0. And actually, you know what? Since, since I got this working, I just may keep this until Linux Mint 13 comes out. I kind of like all the special effects and all that stuff, but that's just for me. Thank you for watching, and as always, I will catch you sometime in the future.